You're listening to Trek FM. Hello and welcome to From There to Here, Trek FM's 50th anniversary rewatch of Star Trek in which we look at back at all 729 episodes from beginning to end. I'm your host for today, Lee Hutchison, and today I'm joined by Amy Nelson. How are you doing, Amy? I'm doing great and very excited to be talking basics part one and part two. I know, it's an, it's very rare that we you get these two parts both on the same episode, so it should be pretty exciting. Um, we'll, we'll talk about basics part one first and then we'll jump into basics part two. So basics part one, Voyager receives a message that Seska has given birth to Chakotay's son. The crew decide that they're going to go fly into the heart of the Kazon Nistrum to retrieve the child, but is it all part of an elaborate plan? And just why are the Kazons targeting their ventral systems? So, what's your thoughts on uh, Basics Part 1, Amy? This is great. You get Seska coming back and uh, get to see the Kazon a little bit more. And uh, I I really enjoyed it. The, get to see all the questions and is he, is he not this, you know, is he his son? Who knows? Yeah, it's definitely a, a, a one that keeps you kind of going, doesn't it? Like, I think this episode is like pay off by the bucket load for like two years worth of Voyager that all these kind of Voyager is obviously very episodic and I find that slightly frustrating but I think it's so exciting that all these little plot lines that have been simmering away pay off big time in here I think it's a fantastic episode it's so epic in scale there's so much going on there's so many great character moments action adventure and a hell of a cliffhanger too I think this is probably one of the best episodes of season two by by some distance oh yeah definitely so what's like so what are some of the highlights of basics part one for you well let's see i i like seska and her deviousness and trying to play that there was i guess in her mind that there was some kind of relationship with chakotay and just taking that and amping it up to the max and and then watching her play it with the Kazon uh, leader what's his name uh, Maj Kala yes and so seeing her play and just sort of her survival skills really I mean if you look at it um, so I, I like seeing that here why do you yes. like basics where do I start? I think there's so many cool moments. Like there's a real tension that's going through this episode that I think is sorely lacking in Voyager. That why are they targeting the ships like a non-essential systems? Is this child actually Chakotay's? Like this idea that they're actually having to plan and risking something that in later seasons with the Borg it was all too easy and there's too much bravado with this they really are having to think use their wit and wills and science to you know make up a plan and follow through with that plan I think it's pretty exciting um one of the, like a couple moments I really think are fantastic in this episode are um you know three off the top of my head I love when the doctor ends up out in space that's such a cool idea um <laughs> I'm not too sure of the science of that, but yeah, I'll go along with that. It looks really, really cool. Uh, I remember seeing that as a kid and thinking that was the, the funniest thing. I think the suicide bomber is a, a really creepy scene that I always remember my dad losing a, a toenail as a kid and I always found it really creepy. And then watching this Voyager episode, it was, it was reminded of that, just like him like using that to blow himself up. And it's almost really weird. He kind of almost like morphs and explodes and oh it's it's just so cool like the ship's under siege and like it's detonating within it's it's so cool um i love Suter. i think he's one of the best characters in voyager that yeah he had a short spell of three episodes but he is definitely one of the best characters they wrote into the show and i think it's really quite fascinating to see his progress from meld to this episode that this uh rehabilitated killer there's still a bit of a tension underneath with him but the fact that he's this conflicted character 
I, I really think it's building up to something quite exciting that they're going to do in part two with him. So that's great. You know, the ship invasion's cool. It's, it's, there's just so many great things in this episode. I love being able to say that about a Voyager episode. It's great. Yeah, it is. And with Suter, you know, it, there's that tension there that it's like, well, is he really, you know, converted? Is he really staying true to, you know, not kill? Is, you know, how do you give a second chance and he definitely plays that very well very well yeah and i mean it's fascinating that yeah he killed a member of the voyager crew and yeah he deserves to be punished for that but you think of like this crew where it is made up of maki who who possibly did kill federation um allies officers or anything like that in their line of duty it's it is quite frustrating to see him getting such a, a bum deal when it's much more cushy for some of the the other murky to to get by in voyager i, I can imagine it being a frustrating experience to be to be suitor mm-hmm. yeah and the, the punishment of staying in his quarters and i, I mean we don't know how long it's going to take to get back to federation space and there he is just stuck there you know and so when he does try and talk to the captain about you know, doing something productive and, you know, you definitely can see his passion and she sort of sees that passion as, oh, you're not ready to be integrated back into the crew. And, and that's, that's too bad because you definitely see that he, he just really wants to help, but can you trust him? That's the thing. Yeah, for sure. And do you remember what you thought of the the cliffhanger itself the first time you watched it? That Voyager is abandoned on this um, planet. The the ship's been taken away from them. Like, what do you remember that those initial feelings and reactions at the time? Oh yeah, that was, <laughs> that was definitely another one of those cliffhangers that it was like you've got to be kidding me because we only know Voyager. There's not. It's not a station. It's not Federation space. It's you know. There's no star bases to hang out on. It's, Voyager. The ship is a character within itself, and there it goes away and so you're just you're left with that sinking feeling of really what's going to happen and how can they get it back it was certainly a long summer i remembered watching it like i remembered watching the finale and i think it was like eight months before i got round to the video or it came on to sky so you know (laughs) people these days don't realize how lucky they are with netflix and everything like that to be able to just watch it so quickly that i had to endure a very very long summer that year so we're now going to pick up after the summer with Basics Part 2. Well, I, you know, we'll rehash the plot. Voyager is, the Voyager crew has been left on a planet um, in a primordial state of existence. The, there's creatures on the planet killing the crew. There's cavemen running rampant. And meanwhile in space, Tom Paris is working with the Talaxians to dra- try and retake Voyager. While on the ship, the Doctor and Suter are trying to take it from within so what's your thoughts on basics part two yeah i that summary i mean you can see all the many different parts that they have in this episode i mean you're on the planet you're on the shuttlecraft with tom paris you're trying to the doctor and suitor get the voyager back and how are they going to work together and i think it again shows how great the crew is in trusting each other and just knowing that somehow it's going to work out because you know, Paris, he doesn't know what's going on with Voyager and that the doctor's still there and until, you know, they talk to each other. But, you know, this continual trust and then everyone on the planet, well, they're going to come back for us. We've got to, you know, take care of matters. And it definitely, you see the crew being together and trusting each other to, to make it happen. So it's very yeah. good. Yeah, for me, that I, when I w- look back on this episode, I think that the actual plot on the planet isn't, and you know, it's, it's pretty exciting. But compared to the other two plot, uh, the plot line going on in space, I think it's it's just not as good. I mean, I don't want that to sound like I'm slick criticizing it. I just think what's going on in space in this episode is just so fascinating. Yeah. That with with Next Generation, you know, I love it, but so many times the second part really failed to pay off everything that had been built up in the first part with this it delivers big time that i love the relationship between Suter and the doctor that Suter is back having to kill again 
and like the doctor is a bit nonchalant about it at the beginning like oh eh, oh okay and but like the acting from brad duriff is amazing in this episode that he really is struggling with this conflict and that scene where he's come back from killing a Kazon and the doctor wants to give him something to to help him and he's like he just like he crumples up and he's like hugging himself and he's like no drugs no drugs i mean that's brilliant like that's the sort of stuff you really weren't getting much of in voyager it was it was human it was dark it was fascinating it was he's such a great character in this episode and he really does make the ultimate sacrifice and you know i come away from this episode thinking i can't believe they killed him off because they didn't know what else to do with this character like that sums up some of my annoyance with voyager that they've got this amazing ace in the pack uh they don't know what to do with it because it's maybe not the right hand just now so they just get rid of it it's it's really annoying that we lost an amazing actor like Brad Dourif and this amazing character that genuinely was so dark and so interesting. Yes, definitely troubled. And, you know, again, I think they did. They lost out on a great opportunity to recognize second chances and, you know, the change that people can make in their lives and, you know, not be who they once were and that's you know what trek is you know bettering yourself and and giving others second chances and definitely you can see the doctor you know turn around and really appreciate and learn to trust and and uh, really honor Studer and what he did yeah, it's beautifully put there, Amy. That 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 is what Star Trek's about, and while they give it a great representation of this in this episode, it would have been great to have seen that kind of for me carried on and to the season and and to beyond it. That we don't have enough great background characters in Voyager, people that maybe come in a few episodes here and there, and he would have been been have been an excellent addition to the the roster the roster of rogues on Voyager. I mean, we obviously we've lost another episode a uh, member of the maquis in this episode as well hogan is killed off before even the the opening credits as well he's he's killed by the big snake uh i remember as a kid thinking that snake was the coolest thing like to see a cgi snake like that was pretty awesome i think between that and uh the mayor from buffy it was a pretty good year in the 90s for killer snakes <laughs> uh i thought that was pretty awesome and um yeah i think the cgi is, is quite fascinating in that episode i think the action of retaking voyager is really cool as well it looks really good on the 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 tv um them, them going into this nebula then this electrical current running through voyager basically killing most of the k's on it's it looks good yeah so i have a couple questions for you lee um, so when Paris takes the shuttlecraft and uh, he's going out and then comes across Kazon's ship and three blasts and the ship is destroyed. So how come Voyager couldn't do that when the Kazon came in the first place? I mean, was that? Uh, <laughs> well, not to get too nerdy on you on a Star Trek rewatch podcast. Um that's like a like a kind of Kazon shuttle that he encounters at the beginning of Basics, whereas at the finale of Basics Part One, that's one of like their super sized ships. That's their kind of battle cruiser style ship. Oh, so okay. that's the difference. But in a few seasons' time, Voyager will easily defeat Borg cubes and Borg spheres with a couple of blasts. So <laughs> something will happen in the next few years to increase their firepower. So yeah, hopefully that answers question one for you. Okay, and so why did when well, and this sort of goes to. Basics basics one but also two why did they have to land voyager on the planet i mean were their transporters gone like they physically put voyager on the ground i mean why was that needed um it looks cool okay I, it, right. pro it, it's probably as simple as that it's a season finale <laughs> it looks cool we've got this stock footage um i think it's a pretty awesome scene you know i think it all comes down to the visuals of it all really i think it looks really cool with like the voyager crew and like the ship flies off um you know they, they i will just assume the transporters were damaged okay. or something like that that <laughs> they um, were damaged yeah. okay we'll go along with that along all right with that. like it's another thing that it always makes me laugh when in this episode when they've destroyed the it's more part one when they destroy the self-destruct system and they're like oh um what are we going to do oh we're, we're doomed we can't blow up the ship now 
just go shoot a phaser at the uh, warp core. Like, I won't tell anyone that, like, you know, that's the way you can do it. Like, there's so many ways to destroy the ship. It's not like the warp core is just, um, God damn, we're screwed now. It's, <laughs> you know, it's it's things like that that, you know, you just kind of have to go along with, I suppose, sometimes. Um, but no, I think it's a, a crack and start to season three. And despite not being the biggest Voyager fan on the planet, I think um, it really is a great season that they've got ahead. And it really starts quite well with this episode. Yes, it definitely starts it off with a bang for sure. Yeah. Well, while Voyager season three starts, we've come to the end of our block. So Amy, if people want to get in touch with you and answer questions about, about Kazon shuttles and motherships, where can they find you? Please find me on the Babel Conference, which is Trek FM's uh, Facebook group, which uh, come on in and join in, join the conversation. Yeah, you can also find me on the Babel Conference too, and you can find me on Twitter at Lee underscore Nostromo. Well, thank you very much for joining me this week, Amy. It's been a pleasure to have you make your debut on this series, and hopefully you won't be a stranger. Well, pleasure is definitely mine. Thank you very much, Lee, and uh, yeah, have a good rest of the day. Yeah, live long and prosper, everyone. <laughs>